During the 1830s, President Andrew Jackson passed the Indian Removal Act. Many natives were forced to abandon the only life they ever knew because of the will of the Americans. Few had left willingly, others were forced. During the relocation, many died due to the harsh conditions on the trail that led from Mississippi to Oklahoma. Later on, this journey was called the Trail of Tears. This is the story of a man, one who witnessed the horrors firsthand. This is John Bennett's tale. I was born in Tennessee. As a young man, I would find myself venturing into the forest and hunting, accompanied only by my rifle and a hatchet. Through these trips, I familiarized myself with the natives, often joining them to hunt. I bonded with the natives. I learned their language and they taught me their ways and treated me with a kindness I didn't deserve, but they gave it anyways. I lived among them for a long time, never thinking things would change. I became a member of the U.S. Army. Not long after, I was sent as an interpreter to the Smoky Mountains in May 1838. There, I watched the horrors of the people I had come to know. I watched as many of the Cherokee were dragged from their homes and arrested by American soldiers. Come on, let's get going! We don't have all day! Ah! They were herded like cattle from their homes and towards the west. Chief John Ross led in a prayer, and soon afterwards the children began to wave farewell to the mountains as the wagons began to roll off the land. It was November 17th when a storm hit us, and with it, cold temperatures and freezing sleep that lasted until the end of our travels. The Cherokee were given no mercy and had to sleep on the ground and in wagons, without fire for warmth. One night, as many as 22 died of poor treatment, disease, and exposure. One of the casualties was Chief John Ross's wife, a Christian who gave her blanket away so a sick child could live. She rode on a wagon through the cold night, developed the illness, and died hours later lying upon a lieutenant's saddlebag. Private, I found her laying here. She's dead. I was on watch when she passed, but remained by the side of Chief Ross, even when my guarding time was up. There was only so much I could do to relieve the immense amounts of death and tragedy, but I did all I could. One of the most horrifying things that I witnessed was my teamster, Ben McDonald, whipping a poor and elderly Cherokee to get him back into a wagon. Come on now, get back in the trail, you savage! Ah! What did I just tell you? No! Get back in- The wire tip lashed onto my cheek, leaving a gash. Before I knew it, my hatchet was out and McDonald was unconscious. Later, I was placed under guard and Ensign Henry Bullock and Private Elkana Millard had both seen what had happened and simply gave the facts to Captain McClellan. However, neither I nor McDonald were brought to trial. Murder is murder and somebody must answer. Somebody must explain the streams of blood that flowed in the Indian country in the summer of 1838. Somebody must explain the 4,000 silent graves that mark the trail of the Cherokee to their exile. I wish I could forget it all, but the picture of 645 wagons lumbering over the frozen ground with their cargo of suffering humanity still lingers in my memory. Thus ends my promised birthday story, this December 11th. 1890.